And the Sharp family. We're going to hear from both families to talk about their cases and their fight for justice. As you can see, you're here, I know, for the RNC, but look at what the RNC brought to us. We warned y'all. We warned the city. And now there's blood on the city's hands once again. So up first, I'm going to welcome Latrice to speak on behalf of the Mitchell family. We want to first say thank you to everyone for coming out and supporting the family. It's been two and a half weeks now since Devontae's murder. For those of you that don't know, on Sunday, June 30th, 2024, the employees at the Hyatt Hotel killed my cousin, Devontae L. Mitchell. There's a video. At first, I want everybody to know that initially they tried to sweep this underneath the rug. The media, the, the story that the Hyatt gave the media was that a man came into the Hyatt causing a nuisance and when police arrived, he was unresponsive. They forgot to mention that they beat the hell out of him until he died and that he was begging for his life. Thankfully, a passerby who happened to be passing by when she heard all of the commotion caught it on video. She caught the last few minutes of my cousin's life on video. And we're here to get justice. No arrests have been made. No charges have been made. We've been pushing and we've been pushing hard. And because of the help from the media and the community, we finally got, you know, the police captain to, to reach out to us. We got, you know, some cooperation from the DA and, and, and the Hyatt has been making statements, but they have not reached directly out to the family. Even though we made some progress, we still need to continue to do hard pushes because the DA is now saying that it's gonna take, I think three weeks before any charges can be filed because they're waiting on autopsy results. So until then, we will continue to march. We will continue to protest because no one should be comfortable until some arrests and, and charges have been made. I'm going to introduce my cousin Darrell, Devontae's brother, to speak. Can you tell us your name again, ma'am? I'm Latresa Giles, L-A-T-R-I-S-A, -S Giles, G-I-L-E-S, and I'm Devontae's first cousin. Yes, my name is Darrell Giles, D-A-R-R-E-L-L-G-I-L-E-S. They murdered my brother at the Hyatt Hotel here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 333 Kilborn Street. They, they, they murdered my brother. They, they, they stood on him for 15 minutes. They beat on him for 15 minutes. That's unacceptable. We need justice and we're looking for justice for my brother. So please, everybody, the community, we need everybody to reach out. Because this is a tragedy and we will not stand for it. My name is Naisha Mitchell. Devante was my brother. I was his big sister. We are definitely going to keep fighting for justice here. We appreciate all you guys' support. We just ask for the community to keep on coming out here with us, keep standing with us until we get some answers. You know, no one has been charged. No one has been arrested. They're saying that they're waiting on autopsy results, but we saw the video. We all saw the video. Why do we need autopsy results to determine if these people need to be arrested or convicted of a crime? We saw them murder him in broad daylight. We need answers and we want it now and we need justice now. Yes, that's right. So as you can see, there's been an interruption in the process of justice because of the RNC. It's got in the way of justice for the family of Devante Mitchell. So up next, we have another representative. You want to speak? 
I'm Samantha Mitchell, Devontae's first cousin, Samantha Mitchell. Um, I just want to echo the thoughts of the charges that are have not been filed yet. There were four, only four charges referred to the DA's office, but there were more than four people who were involved in his death. It started from the inside of the Hyatt. My family saw that footage from the inside and it continued outside. So it wasn't just those four people that you saw, that some of us saw on the video who are responsible for ending his life. And I wanna call out to the Milwaukee community. We need to see more of you out here with us. We want you all marching with us. This is our city, this is somebody here. I've seen many people from our community marching for George Floyd, Floyd, Rihanna Taylor, all of those people, but this is someone local and we need to stick together. We need to stand together, stand with us, stand with the other family who's out here as well. And um, keep pushing, keep pushing for justice. And we'll see y'all, you know, marching with us as we continue to fight for justice. so small it is they try to make us small but we're not we won the NBA championship we got the arts I don't even care I don't I don't even care because it doesn't it doesn't show compassion for my family other families there was a tragedy a couple years ago that was literally caddy corner to the to the Hyatt Literally, black man killed by law enforcement for being at the wrong place at the wrong time. But I thought we could. I thought this was the land of the free. I don't get it. Since when does does not being the richest or not being the palest or not having a suit on or like when does that matter? Like when does life become? about who's better than the next or who's the most and who's the least like i don't get it i never in a million years thought it to be my family i never thought every week we'll be doing some type of protest some type of march some type of some type of like shed some type of light on this situation they come here and make money off our city but when we hurt and we need them, they not there. They turn their back on us. At this point, we on the outside. They probably watching us from their beautiful binoculars and fine wine glasses and, and, and going on about their life. But we gotta remember those seconds, those moments where I had to see my cousin's body on Facebook, Instagram, but I didn't see it enough on CNN, Fox, all these local or big or wherever that I never. Yeah, yeah. I, obviously, we're going to continue to make noise. Um, sometimes you can be distracted, but it doesn't matter. We're going to be here. We've been here. We're not going anywhere. He really doesn't know I'm probably the loudest one in my family, to be honest. I'm trying to be cool. I'm, I'm really trying to be cool, to be honest. But the best thing I can say right now to just probably like outdo him is say simple justice for who? Justice for who? Justice for who? 
When do we want it? Now. When do we want it? Now. When do we want it? Now. And you know what? We go. We we and we have to pay the same respects to the family that's also here supporting us. Sam Sharp. Same situation. Treated as if he didn't matter. He mattered to us. We just want you to understand he could have been your family member. He could have been your brother, your cousin. He could have been your loved one. He could have been the same color as you. He could have he could have been your pet dog. People care more about pets than they about about humans these days. It's crazy. They care more about that. So we just gonna continue to be here and ask, just just ask. We not begging, but we asking. If you got any type of compassion, any love, any any type of morals for life, you'll respect the fact that we all need you. We gotta stand here together. They don't hear us until we all chant. They don't hear it. We're louder than, we can be louder than them any given day. We obviously still produce and we come in stronger every time. So until we get justice, I'm gonna continue to say, Justice for who? Justice for who? Samuel Sharp? Samuel Sharp. Justice for who? 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 Samuel Sharp. Because it's about all of us, not just one. That's right. That reach all of us in a different way. We all brothers and sisters out here. We are. No matter what they tell you, it's us against them. They gonna keep making rules, we gonna have to keep breaking rules. Cause they're breaking all the codes of ethics. All of them. And my name is Carl Harris, K-A-R-L. H-A-R-S, first cousin of Devontae Mitchell, now a new friend of Mr. Sam Sharp, and we're going to get through this together. Thank y'all. Thank you to Devontae's family. Up next, I'm going to welcome Katrina, aunt of Sam John Sharp. Katrina. My name is Katrina Gaines, K-A-T-R-I-N-A-T-A-M-E-S. I'm here on behalf of my nephew, for his mother's sake. Um, the video that everyone sees of my nephew, they see him holding knives. You know the media is going to just blow that up. But my nephew was being beat down by the guy that he had those knives on yesterday. He came to my sister's house yesterday morning telling us that this guy is picking on him. Now most people that know Sam Sharp, they know that he has MS and he doesn't, his gait is unbalanced. And so we told him just come on home, you don't have to be down here. So he said well my dog is there, he loved that dog love animals. So he went down to get the dog. He stopped at someone's house as far as we know and they gave him two paring knives from what we were told because he said how those guys had stomped and beat him. He went to the police. They didn't do anything about it. He went down to get his dog and the guy that he was fighting started antagonizing him knowing that he really couldn't walk. So he was so angry because they was trying to mess with his tent, mess with him, mess with his dog. He just got tired of it. He wanted to be on his own with his MS. He didn't want us to feel like we had to take care of him or burden him. He told us all that God told him to go and help in that community. And that's what he did. Now, when he was younger, he did have some issues and he made some mistakes but he lived his 
life for 13, 14 years without no police involvement or anything. My nephew just wanted to get his dog and come home. But this guy who he was fighting was antagonizing him. And I hope he feels really good because messing with this guy who has MS, who is crippled, who has leeches on his brain, and for you to mess with him like that, and then he was laughing and taunting at him because he knew he couldn't catch him. And he thought it was funny. And the police, they seen what they seen. And when they were asking him to stop, we as a family knows that he was trying to catch his balance to stop the turn because if you know him and there are people that know him know that he doesn't even walk well. He can barely go up three flights of steps. But for the police to just shoot him like that, 27 bullets, come on, wow. and you shot my nephew wow. like that. Jesus. You shot him. Jesus. It didn't take all of that. If he was someone else, if he was a different race, and I hate to bring race in this because I have all races in my family. But you wouldn't have killed him like that. You wouldn't have shot him like that. 27 bullets. And all this he was doing was trying to protect himself. He went to the police and they did nothing. And now my nephew is shot. He is shot and he is dead. And it is just horrible. Because it was just too much. They could have at least tased him or something. But they just gunned him down because it was just another fucking nigga they can shoot. And that's how I feel about it. And I'm sorry to even have to say those words, but that's how I feel. You shot him like that. You could have just tased him. You didn't. You ran up on him and you shot him. You didn't even give him a chance to stop. If you look at that video, he didn't even get two seconds to pause and stop. And if you would, if they would have at least just waited and see they would have seen his gait was unbalanced he wouldn't have been shot like that they could have tased him they didn't have to kill him I, I just can't say that hello can y'all hear me this really don't make no sense y'all my name is Angelique Sharp from Sam Sharp Sister Hey Angie, E L R Q, you mean Sharp? First of all, this Bible and that Bible that my sister holding, this is all that's left of them besides his dog that they took. Wow. Let's tell you about this Bible we gave it to him 10 months ago. When he moved out the house, he said that Jehovah told him to come down here. With the other brothers, the houseless uh, and unsheltered brothers and sisters of ours, and let them know that Jehovah wanted them to know that he hadn't forgotten about them and that he loved them and that he wanted to come down and pray with them and be a part of the community like Jesus did. And I didn't understand. And Sam opened up this Bible because I have a lot of trauma, race relations trauma. And he opened up this Bible and showed me a scripture. And he said, it's weak. I need you to know this. He said, I know you're angry. But he said, God is impartial. God only see your heart. He don't see color. And I said, Sam, but the world do. And it's hard. It's hard to try to see through God's eyes. But he said, Angelique, vengeance belongs to God. It belongs to Jehovah. And... That's something that really stuck with me. And so I think about my brother and I think about what's all been happening. First of all, would you hold this so I could just speak for a second? Yeah, so what I need y'all to know is my brother called home. First of all, we visited him on a regular basis. He called home on Saturday. I was on a nap. My mother called, called me. I missed her call. The second time I answered her call, posted this, posted this on my Facebook. I, the police have not contacted us. I asked not one question. Everything that they're doing is one-sided. They're sitting here, building up an investigation, talking to the perpetrator. A man that's been premeditating murdering my brother. I called my brother. 
It's on the car log. It's on my phone and my purse. And it's on the Facebook. You can't, you can't make that up. Say, my mother told me and she was hysterical. She said, Angelique, Sam just called me. He told me that there's a guy down in the camp that promised that he's going to kill him, his dog, and burn up his tent. And he's fearful about it. And it's serious. You need to call him. I called my brother. Again, this is on a call log, on my Facebook, on my phone. Police have not contacted me. Ask not one question at all. I don't know how y'all do an investigation without y'all yeah. putting video out here. Now, there's two sides to a fence. We know that, right? So there's a side where you can have video with no context. But then you can also have an investigation with no video, right? So we're saying, yeah, we want the full investigation. My brother, well, I called him and I said, Sam, what's going on? He, he repeated the same thing to me about this guy. He said, Angelique, he was like, Angelique, I don't want you involved. You don't need to call, you don't need to get involved. You don't need to call the police anything. He was like, if this guy run up on me, I'm gonna have to protect myself. So you have a video of a man that's defending himself. That again, like my aunt said, has multiple sclerosis. Right. He has lesions on his brains and on his spine. He is documented, fully documented, went to doctor appointments. If you know about MS, you know that this throws off your sensation, your balance. My brother could not walk. He was not launching. My brother was stumbling forward. And if you look at the shadow video, he was stumbling forward. And on the video, that was edited and it was paused. We want the whole video for one. Okay? Because again, these guys, again, that guy knew that my, my brother was not... He wasn't physically stealth enough to actually physically fight him. A child, an elderly person will bring a weapon. If someone approached you and tried to fight you, they didn't have they didn't have guns, they didn't have shirts on. Sam was known not to wear a shirt. But this is not being properly investigated. It is it's highly disrespectful. And I what's also what's also hurtful is that this is a city that me, my, my, my aunt, we work hard in for our community. To have people come from the outside that don't not, know nothing about this community. You don't know how to, you don't know, these are veterans, other people with mental health, physical ailments, different things that are going on. Without the proper training, how do you just address the situation without fully, fully getting the information? I do believe that not only the issue that they had could have been addressed and handled properly, but they could have shot in the air. If a bullet went off right now, everybody in here was scattered. Why would they why would they put a bullet in the air and let them scatter and figure out what's happening? Two or a taser is too many things, too many scenarios that we think could have de-escalated the situation. Again, my brother did not have time to respond or he never had time to even turn around when you emotional your adrenaline is high you feel like your life is threatened and you face to face confront with somebody if me and this guy was confronted with someone and you coming from back here somewhere yelling oh, we, we can't hear you neither one of them turned around and heard those commands and you wouldn't have either and I want y'all to remember all of y'all up there all of y'all out here that are parents, when your kids grow up and they get into an altercation and they feel like they got to protect themselves because we live in a country where everybody wants to protect themselves, how do you want to walk up on a situation watching your child in an altercation with someone else? How would you want that situation to be handled? Because by the police, because there's no way you're going to tell me you want it to be handled like that. There's not no officer, it ain't no mayor, it ain't no chief of police that's gonna tell me that you will want a situation to be escalated like that that did not have a gun. Right. Right. Talking about this is immediate threat to life. How do we know if the police killed the perpetrator or the victim here? Right. How do we know? We sick of this, we tired of it, we want answers, and for now, all I'm gonna say is we appreciate every single person that's come out day after day that supported our family. We love Sam. We're going to always advocate for
after him. Y'all not gonna make him out to be a knife wielding criminal because that's not who he was. That's right. The yeah, streets that's right. know him. That's the right. police don't. Y'all don't get to tell the story and talk, tell the narrative. We're gonna tell it. We sick yeah. of it. And today, that that narrative stops today. That's right. It stops today. Yeah. Yeah. It was not that guy. He was not that guy. We grew up in Germantown. We went to predominantly white schools. We dealt with racism our whole life. My father was a drafted, Sam Sharp Sear was a drafted Vietnam veteran who fought for his country. Probably half of the reason why half of these people here is because our dad answered that call to the Vietnam War. He couldn't even share a water fountain or a toilet with his camaraderies fighting for this country. So don't come here telling us that y'all are gonna disregard my brother life like he was a nothing. This ain't y'all community. Coming here, thinking that y'all gonna dispose of our loved ones, you're not gonna do it. You're simply just not gonna do that here. I would rather have had the Milwaukee Police Department who know the people of this community to have at least had an opportunity to address this situation before people who have no ties to this community and don't care nothing about our extended family members down there. I'm done. Say his name. Samuel Sharp. Say his name. Samuel Sharp. Say his name. Samuel Sharp. Devonte Mitchell. Say his name. Devonte Mitchell. Say his name. Devonte Mitchell. Say his name. Devonte Mitchell. Nothing but love and solidarity to the Mitchell family, to the Sharp family. So right now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna lead another family-friendly, peaceful march. We're gonna get within sight and sound of the hot.
make some more noise.